If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. A little long-winded for you. <laughs> for the first 30 minutes, uh, the intro with Adam, Justin, and myself, we have some fun conversation. First, we talk about Justin's sexual bedroom. chocolate. <laughs> chocolate. I forgot we talked about syrup. that. Sexual oh. chocolate. Uh, man. Which led us right into STD testing. <laughs> yeah, right there. I mean, that's a natural progression. It was a smooth that. transition right there. Yeah. Then we yeah. give you some useful information on how to escape a submerged car. We talk about hacking autonomous cars, mm. Christmas activities, our favorite Christmas movies, and Adam goes into depth with his testosterone replacement therapy update. He actually stopped taking testosterone and is trying to get his body to produce its own natural testosterone. Uh, I actually recommended to him cordyceps uh, because in the context of low testosterone, it has been shown to raise testosterone. Uh, Our sponsor, Four Sigmatic, actually has some of the best uh, processed cordyceps you can find. Now, if you go to Four Sigmatic, that's the word for spelled F-O-U-R, Sigmatic, S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com forward slash mind pump and you enter the code mind pump without a space you'll get a discount at checkout we also talk about dallas mccarver's autopsy it's actually horrible what they found uh, with his kidneys liver and heart and then we mention our other sponsor thrive market doug bought us some interesting our unboxing segment oh dude wait till you guys hear what we got Uh, we got some cool stuff crunchy stuff in there we're eating insects that's uh, that's why you just dude you just gave uh, sorry sorry come on uh spoiler alert so here's our discount if you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump you'll get one month free membership twenty dollars twenty dollars off your first three orders of 49 dollars or more and free shipping then we get into the questions the first question was How important is it for athletes to hit their macros or to focus on a diet that keeps inflammation at a minimum? Uh, If you're an athlete and you're competing in college or high school, believe it or not, actually paying attention to your nutrition will put you... I guarantee you're not caring about it right now. Yeah, start caring about it. You'll be light years ahead of your peers. The next question was, this particular individual, you know, very productive at night. They finish work late. Then they want to work out. Is it more important to work out and lose sleep or is it important, more important to get adequate sleep? The answer may surprise you. The next question was, what are the pros and cons of having a male versus female coach? Does having a penis or vagina make you a better coach? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, next question <laughs> <Absolutely>. was, <laughs> what are our thoughts on transitioning into minimalist shoes? Besides looking stupid, do they have benefits? <laughs> <laughs> they actually do. And you'll be surprised by this one because our, our opinions have changed yeah. over the last I year. I like them. Now, we do talk about Maps Prime Pro uh, in this episode in relation to the minimalist shoes. Now, Prime Pro is a correctional program. So what that means is if you have issues with your ankles, your feet, your knees, your hips, your your shoulders, your shoulder blades, your hands, your wrists, your neck, your spine, this program will help you assess what is causing the problem and will help you correct it. It's one of the only programs I know of that has that self-assessment tool and then has you know a prescription and it directs it based on your individual needs. Now, we also have a bundle that combines that with MAPS Prime which teaches you how to do your advanced warm-ups. Now, if you warm up properly or if you prime properly before your workouts, you will get much more better or much more effective results from your workouts. i got to speak correct English here. Um, just by priming properly. You Thou can, must speak correctly. You can get both those pro- programs, MAPS Prime and MAPS Prime Pro, in our Prime bundle, and it discounts both of them, I believe, over 20% off. For more information, just go to mindpumpmedia.com. Dude, I'm having um, I'm having fun right now. With what? Uh, with eat, your body? Eat. I'm having fun with my body. <laughs> I have fun with my body every day. You want to have some fun with my body? Yeah. I'm having ah. I'm having fun uh, eating right you, now. Oh, just enjoying <laughs> enjoying all the Christmas food or what? No, I mean here's the thing, like. I did that. Uh, I did those two. You brought it in the bedroom. I did those two. What? Your food. My food in the bedroom. Yeah, is that why? I've never done that actually. I know that's never been. I've appealing. never. I've never had sex with food. Right. Uh huh. I tried one time with chocolate syrup. That was not good. You just put it in the chocolate syrup. Just all over. Oh, uh, I, like I feel like that's something. I feel like that's something you do like at a at a hotel. 
where yeah. you only got to clean the shit up afterwards. I saw they it on a movie this. once, yeah. and I was like, "Yeah, let's let's go for I it." I think anybody who's tried to it do was that a horrible it, idea. Uh, yeah, no, I think anyone who's tried it, I'm sure I attempted imagine it the once. Fucking, too many different smells going on. Imagine like, the poor maid yeah. who walks in. <laughs> just, just picture this: they see the bed, the sheets are all fucked they're up. Like, oh my god! And there's and there's <laughs> Dios mio. and there's chocolate all over the yeah. fucking. She doesn't know. Which could be mistaken for blood, right? Or poop. Yeah, or poop. Yeah, yeah. She has no idea. Thinking, she has yeah. no idea. She's walking in. Oh, it's like, a storm happening. Yeah, because you have to get close enough to it to realize it's not poop. You yeah. gotta lick it. Yeah. So at first yeah, you're you, looking you back. Gotta t- you gotta taste it a little <laughs> bit. So I can yeah. just imagine like you, only way you know. Like the, the guy or girl like they open the, the the you know the room to clean it and then they just probably stare at it and just like yeah. they contemplate like is my job worth it? Like, should, I just, <laughs> should I just quit? Should I just quit stop? today? Yeah. Should I just fuck off? Is this really happening? Yeah. No, no, so I'm in so I did those two periods where I fasted. For a couple days, and then I took uh, antimicrobials, antiparasitic supplements, um, and uh, Paris- you did that again, huh? Pa- no, I did it twice in a row. So Parasmart, right? That's mm-hmm. the one I used. And then I did a particular diet, and then now that I've done them both, I hate to say this because I don't want to, I don't want to challenge the tummy gods. <laughs> so I just want, I just want to real quick say, I, uh, uh, I, I they will smite thee. I respect you, tummy <laughs> gods. So I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to talk shit, but I feel like. M- I'm invincible. Wow. Yeah. No, you now you've done it. Bro, I went to Cabo and I drank all kinds of fucking everything. I ate whatever. Everybody came back. Everybody had mud butt. I had nothing. Wow. No wow. mud butt. Nothing. Wow. Everybody. Even my even my I always get mud butt. Even from my fam Mexico. even my cousin who can fucking eat like a billy goat and have no problems. Like I could digest a, you know, a, a stainless steel spoon if you had to eat it. Mm. And he even had the mud butt. Me, nothing at all. Wow. And I'm I'm enjoying I'm like, this is crazy. And what I mean by enjoying is I'm not eating a bunch of food that would normally bother me because I'm s- still apprehensive about that. So I'm not really doing that. Right. What I am doing though is for the first time in a long time, I can actually push my calories and not have problems and just get stronger. Dude, so stay away from I'm getting bigger the Amazonian uh river. What? Yeah. Oh I isn't there like a parasite that swims through your pee hole? It swims in your in your dick. What? Yeah, yeah you didn't know that. That's a real thing. That's yeah. a real deal. That scares the hell out of me. Yeah. So you're Where is this at? in the in the Amazon. Amaz- uh, what is it? The Nile. The no, that's not the Nile. Yeah, it's just the Amazon. The Amazon River. Oh, just the Amazon yeah. River. Yeah. yeah. Is it, where's the Nile? It's over in Egypt. Egypt. Yeah. Why did I think in the two Africa. were? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There's my geography. <laughs> for you. I, uh, yeah, real good, Professor Sal. Yeah, I know. I didn't. Yeah. Do, I didn't know. Yeah, so I skipped geometry. <laughs> so geometry. yeah, dude, you you, you swim <laughs> in <Geometry>. your feet. <laughs> Damn it! It's these uh, parasitic like little things that swim and then they attach to your 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 wing, and they crawl up inside your pee hole. Oh my god! It's like the, the creepiest thing I've. Sounds ever like one of those seen. alien movies, dude. That's yeah, dude. Scary yeah, shit. But it's real. Uh, how do you get it out? I don't know. You just gotta pee? pee real hard. They have those like hooks, so you can't oh. like, you know what I mean. Oh. That's an area that I would never want anything inside of it. Uh-uh. Right? You uh-uh. know what I mean? Nothing Isn't there ahead. like no? It wasn't the old like test for. I think they taught us this in seventh grade or whatever. Like when they try to scare you with STDs, hmm. that you the, to test you for chlamydia or whatever, they put a Q-tip up your pee hole. I've heard that too. Is that a uh, is that an myth? Urban, or, is that real? Yeah, urban legend? I don't know. No, no they, they just they just what? swab inside, bro. Hmm. They don't. He <laughs> <You> knows. <laughs> yeah. I'm coming in with the knowledge. I do there know, you go. bro. Yeah. Is, they don't fucking stick it all in, and they fucking swab at the end of it, dude. They don't put anything in there. They put the Q-tip like just in just in the, in there. But I mean, you're talking about like a. And then they grow it in like a petri dish. Yeah. No, then they then they then they. Uh, I think they wipe it on like a fucking microscope. Uh, Fucking thing, and then they go petri dish. Yeah, is that what it is? Yeah, is, is he okay. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Sure. Yeah, they don't. Show, oh, you did that whole thing? Of course, I've had fucking t- tested for STDs. I know? got tested too, but I don't have anybody swab my dick. Oh, he just did like, like the, the look check, like drop your dress, drop your pants. Like, uh, no, no you it looks normal. <laughs> no, you do the <laughs> no blood. crabs here. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. Uh, you do the blood, you know, the oh, blood wait. test and the 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 all the you know the doctor checks you and all that stuff. Yeah, when they when they do that. Remember the first time you did that test? Did you guys? We asked for panic, right? They you know, all the time. It doesn't even matter. Up. Yeah, it's just like you just like immediately. Oh, 100 percent. You're like, oh my god, what if? Yeah, dude. So that my night. my brother 
did his he he does it every you know he does it every year or whatever he's a single guy and he's uh, you know, sexually active <laughs> he's like, so he's always but he's very safe he's in a first name basis at yeah. Planet Parenthood yeah, no. over there <laughs> so, but he's super safe he's very safe he's he's, like, I subscribe to Planet he's B. not a bareback rider he's very very safe right yeah. but he did his normal test and I guess they changed a part of it to where it talks about this particular antibody that they're trying to find. That, that they're looking for that will tell you that you, if you have HIV way before the old test would tell you. So there's an HIV, the original test of HIV, it would tell you, but it would have to be something like a certain amount of weeks after you got exposed because your body would have to build up the virus. Well, they have this new test that looks for something that, and, it, and it tells you much quicker, right? Mm. So he gets the results and it doesn't say on the test like negative or positive. It says... Uh, see your doctor it said no it said <laughs> something yeah Fuck! I, I don't remember exactly what it said but it was something like uh you know l- lower than a particular amount or something like that so he's like what the fuck does that mean so and it's a friday so doctor's office is closed oh right of course. so this this kid dude <laughs> he calls me up bro it's like it's friday night sweating bullets <clears throat> bro it's friday night it's i don't know 11 o'clock so I see my phone. I see my brother calling me 11, and I'm like, oh, shit, what's going on? That's weird. So I answer the phone, and uh, he's like, did you see my text? And I'm like, no. So I look through my text, and he sends me all these all these like forums on this particular test. And the funny thing is none of these forums give you this definitive answer. They kind of do, but they kind of don't. You can almost misconstrue it. So he's sending me all these because he's obviously been doing research right uh, all night like he's been he's been doing this shit since he first got the test he came home uh, from work no. he's fucking sweating all so he's, kinds of rabbit holes so he tells me and he's like dude what is this does this what does this mean dude and i'm like i have no idea i've never heard of it before which scares him because usually i know something right so i'm like i don't know so he, he, he sends me a thing so i'm reading what he sent me and i'm like no dude i'm like you're fine bro there's nothing there or whatever and he's like just read my text so i'm reading them and i'm like well, I said, let me do some more research on my own, which scared him even more because I just wanted to be sure, right? So I go and I do my research and I find out, obviously, he's, he's all good. So I'm like, how long do I wait before I tell him? Because <laughs> he's fucking sweating. sweating out all weekend. So I get back on the phone oh, with him, right? you're a dick. Just, I know, I'm, I'm an older brother, so I do. I know, it's true. <laughs> so, it's a good lesson for him. Yeah, that's what you do. So I get on the phone with him and he's like, what? He's like, what did you find? And I'm like, uh, I'm like tell me. I didn't say yesterday. Like, this, is the, this is the answer. I said, Tell me the last time like you did something that you think might have been risky. He's like, what? Why? I'm like, well, just tell me. Tell me what's happened. Like, what's going on? <laughs> so we go into this like 15 minute conversation. The poor kid's sweating his ass off. He's like, I always wear a condom. I never know uh, this and that. And I'm like, I'm like, do you wear a condom when you get a blowjob? He's like, well, you know, not re- no. And I'm like, well, you know, maybe if she had a cut in her mouth sometimes. And he's like, what are you talking about? Oh like, what's God. going on, dude? What's happening? You're creating all yeah, these yeah. scenarios. And I'm for like, him. I'm like, listen, oh, I'm man. like, have you talked to mom and dad? And he's like, no. <laughs> why would I talk to mom and dad? And I'm like, I'm just kidding, bro. You're fucking, yeah. Fucking, he was so angry, dude. That's he had a hilarious. heart attack. <laughs> oh, dude. Dude, I got a crazy. Yeah, I got a crazy story because yesterday, I, I get home, and and yesterday <laughs> Katrina and I actually headed home. Uh, at a at a decent hour, right? So I think it was like four thirty or five when we we were supposed to be getting home, and for us that's early. And so I, I we message each other. I'm like, hey, did you leave work already? Yeah, I left work already. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm on my way home. So you know, we're we house is decorated, everything's set. We really haven't had a chance to like sit down, watch our Christmas movie that we watch and shit. Like we have our you know traditional shows that we watch our movies during this time of year. And so I'm thinking fire dinner, all this stuff. And she's uh, I'm at home and I get there first. And, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And then I looked down and I, I was, you know, surfing on the Internet. So, of course, the time flew. And I looked down at a text message and she says, I'm, I'm on the phone outside. And so she was she'd been out in front of our house for over an hour. And I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, She's like, oh I was just cut, catching up with Reg. And I said, uh, what, what happened? She, so her friend, uh, her friend's sister uh died and drove oh, terrible drove off a a levee and and drowned trip on this so she it, they say that she swerves left she swerves right she, she does that like three or four times they can tell by the tracks and then she goes off into the water and she actually um called 911 and the, the while she was in the water yes what the windows were all up and stuff right and she and, and the nine one one call. She's t- she's talking to him, and I and what they're trying to, and they have they're trying to put this all together. Like, what the fuck? Because 
she's telling them she's she's almost calm she's like oh i crashed my car and uh, you know there's there's water up to my my shin so uh what they think is that the airbags deployed and so she couldn't see out the windshield and she didn't realize that she was actually submerging she oh, just shit. she just she you know boom crash probably bumped her head all over the place airbags deploy and she's you know got a water up to her foot inside of her car and so she's she calls nine one one and she's telling him um an accident I'm okay this that but there's water up to my ankles so they they found her she drowned oh my god that's terrifying and she, thirty feet dude thirty feet down at the bottom that's terrifying right could you imagine how fucking no I don't want you to think about it dude that's so terrifying uh, right no because I have kids I immediately think about uh. if I have my kids it's terrifying man yikes you know, I mean you know what you know what you know what's even crazier is that. She was uh, she was coherent. She was able to call like on and the phone, on the everything. phone, and like, man, that time should have been spent trying to get out of the car to, s- to swim yeah. up. Yeah. So you know what's scary about that is uh, I watched the special. That's right. I watched the special a long time ago on that where if that happens to you, people try to open the door but and they can't because of the pressure. pressure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what you need to do is open your window. If you can't open your window, break it. Break it. That's the only way. Out. Yeah. Really break it and swim yeah. out. Because yeah. otherwise you'll go down with the which which by the way could be extremely hard too because think the pressure on the other side it's like you punching a concrete wall so, so they, they make sell the, these yeah I know I have one of them the little ham- really? little hammers with a little point oh shit. yeah it's a plastic it's about this big I gotta buy one oh you should and you you tap it it'll shatter glass yeah so all you'd have to do is go tap and it goes right whoosh. in the corner yeah mm-hmm. wow yeah so it's uh, I, I, that's I, terrifying I know right that, right away I thought that too because I I was I thinking have a like big fear what I would do. But what if like like so if I was thinking like, what if one of my cars went over and did that what what would I how would I handle that and you're right I'm thinking I would, I would roll the window down because I know I can't open the door but what if the, the water comes in you think it seeps into the doors it could fry the electric the elect, uh, that's what I'm saying you have to break yeah. the window yeah so the, like I, all my doors are all electric and stuff yeah you can't roll it down right so it's not gonna be able to roll down you have to break it right well, you know the other thing I was thinking because we we had talked forever about like you know automated cars you know like autonomous cars I mean. And uh, like how it's all going to be reliant on this infrastructure, this this software system, and you know satellites and all this like communication. You know what happens when it, the communication breaks down, and you know there's an object that it doesn't recognize, and then boom, you know like you, you just like you run watched, off road or you run, yeah you watch too much Transformers, dude. What? <laughs> no, this really happened. This happened to this happened Tesla to Tesla driver. because yeah, there was, I know I heard I've ever heard yeah there was a truck that was like a white truck. So it didn't, it didn't really, recognize yeah, it. Yeah, because of the sun's glare. It thought it was like part of the sky. I'm more yeah. worried about the computers learning how to teach each other. I mean, that's fucking even scary. Imagine when your car is now like real talk, Transformers, bro. bro. bro that Transformers. Just, that's right. just, that just Optimus happened. Prime is fucking only 10 years away, man. So that just happened. I don't remember. True. Who was it that created this AI computer? They had these AI computers and they were learning from each other. Yeah, we talked about this. And then they created their own language. It was at Facebook. (laughs) Yeah, nobody could understand what they were saying to each other. Fuck that, right? Oh, my God. Imagine that. They get into the car systems. The cars start doing that. Well, the other thing, too, is that you can, most cars today, you can hack into them and operate them. A lot of cars, you can hack into them and operate them remotely and make them crash and do shit. Do you know what I'm saying? So somebody could hack it. Yeah. Yeah. What? So if you're in a self-driving I think, car, I think you're making that, that was up. the other thing. No, no yeah, no. that's why I brought that up. Well, I mean, if you're oh, if you're in a self-driving car, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I thought you were talking about, like my GMC, like someone's gonna be able. Well, to Well, actually, no, they can. It's the, they can. If you do OnStar, and yeah, all that, they, yeah. Can, actually, they can they shut can your engine. You they can shut your engine off. They could operate your brakes and and your gas many yeah. times. Can they? Yep. So they could punch the gas. You can't do anything, and you're fucked. Really? Yeah. I don't think they could do that. I saw it on uh, 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 what is that? The Born Identity. Dude, we should look at the more identity. <laughs> There's a lot of truth Matt in that. Matt Damon did it. Yeah. Matt, yeah. Matt Damon. Matt yeah. Damon. I was waiting for like Team a reputable site to come out right there. Uh, no, like, yeah. What do you do though, dude? Think about that. Like, oh, you have all these uh, autonomous cars, and some like foreign country or terrorist group uh, hacks into like a thousand of them. It just makes them all crash. Uh, you know uh, I, mean? I heard this quote. Uh, um, Elon Musk was talking about robots. He was like talking because, like, you know how they're like. The, have you actually seen like what they're like the latest robots how they move and like how they're quick creepy. they can run and stuff now <laughs> yeah, they're creepy uh, bro uh, yeah, they can like, do like, oh that's nothing like wait till the only way you can see him is with a strobe light and he's like good luck sleeping or something like that I don't know, something quote like that what a dick like, oh my god <laughs> like that that was like pure terror in my, in my wait till you're moving that fast yeah where they're moving the speed of light? Like, is that what he's saying? No, like, you can only no, no. see it with a strobe light. Yeah, like, no, no, it's past no, no, physics would not allow it to move. Yeah, well, so I'm like, what the, what's he, what the <laughs> that, fuck? That's, he, he said uh, something like that, like, dude. 
Because they're moving. He's basically saying. He's just saying that like they're yeah, moving so terrifying. fast that you can't you can't see him unless you have a strobe light on. Yeah, that'll be cool, huh? <laughs> that will not Super be cool. cool. That'd be fucking Dude, weird. Not robot wars. Yeah. That shit'll happen for that's, real. That's yeah. Will Smith I robot yeah. all over again. Hey, have you do you mm. guys uh so you were saying you did Christmas movies. Do you guys go to uh Christmas in the park? I don't do Christmas. At Los Gatis? No, no, downtown. downtown San Jose. Oh no. You know, with all the little animatronic I stay away from downtown San Jose. Why? It's just not my vibes. What's wrong with it? I'm not, I'm not, I don't feel it. Why? You racist? Yeah. <laughs> no. I, feel like, I don't like it. I don't like downtown <laughs> San Jose. I feel like it's not my a, thing. I feel like he's an elitist. Yeah. yeah. No, I, that's why I moved to Santa Cruz. Yeah, that's my yeah. place. So downtown Santa Cruz then, huh? Yeah. That's a safe place too. Yeah, safe. So, uh, no, they have the animatronic uh, you know, little elves and shit and trees and you walk through and they have food trucks and hot cocoa and it's uh Did you do it already? No, I'm going tonight. Oh, you are? Yeah, I'm going to take the kids tonight. I mean, if I had kids, I would, yeah. but that's not, I mean, for me and Katrina, I'm like, me. I bet, I bet she would like They have it. like an ice skating thing she at the would. boardwalk. So no. You should do it for which her. Which is cool. I'll have to check Yeah, I like it out. to do cooler stuff though. Like do like yeah. a wagon ride or something like that. Like, yeah, it's cool. Have you guys Where ever do you done? do a wagon ride? Dude, Los Gatos. Yeah. But what, what do they do? They just go around the town and they go Yeah, but it's back? cool though. You're in a, you're in a horse and buggy, dude. And it's, you're drinking and they give you, serve you co cocoa and you got a blanket and it's a comfortable and you get it to yourself. Is it a reindeer or a horse? It's a reindeer. Uh, oh, yeah. it's a reindeer. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was. I saw a horse. I'm like, it's yeah, no, it's, it's reindeer. Is <laughs> a fly? Uh, I would. Yeah, that sounds. You gotta pay cool. extra for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I live near a Roaring Camp. They have like a train and everything. That, yeah, like, goes down to uh, the boardwalk. It's all lit up and stuff. So we've done that before. That That's. Was cool. I haven't cool. done that. Yeah, so it's what fun, is, dude. What's it like? Real fun. It's just. I mean, it, you get to see through the redwoods and it, and you can go all the way um, to the boardwalk. So it stops there and then you can go there. Now they actually have um, ice skating at the boardwalk. So you can go do that and then come back. Dude, I want to do that. It's pretty rad. Then there's the, uh, what is it over there in, uh, in Los Gatos? What's that park over there? Yeah, uh, Vasona. Vasona. I, and they have we've the, done that too, yeah. Okay, so. That's what the horse You just drive through. Through. through it. Yeah, like, I used to do that. With the lights. You know why I don't do that shit anymore? Yeah. If you're from Los Gatos, this is why I don't, I don't fucking do that shit anymore. You got to wait like two hours in line with your car. Yeah. yeah. Forget why. That's stupid. And the yeah. light show is pretty, too much. It's pretty now weak. you have to it's get like weak. a time frame where you pay for that. You can you can only go at that time. When frame. we where we grew up in my in Modesto, right, small town, there there is a Christmas tree lane and there's candy cane court, and they're famous. And it's just a neighborhood that is for traditionally like gone over. Like they go crazy. Yeah, and it's a yeah. huge and the candy cane or the candy cane court smaller. It's a court, right? But the Christmas tree lane is, you know, you're wrapping through four or five different neighborhoods and everybody like they're connecting like people's got trains going to other people's houses Cost them like 50 grand you oh, know, for that month of oh, lights over the top but it's <laughs> yeah. really cool yeah. to go through there and drive through the neighborhood and it's actually because it's small town so we used to even when i first moved to the bay area we actually should for christmas time we'd drive back there to go watch all the lights over there so i know there's a cool place there i've heard there's some cool places in sacramento that there's do that I, there's neighborhoods that there's i'll drive one. through for with good lights there's one in willow glen that's yeah. pretty nice they got they like they they do the lights over the trees and everything we found one house i don't remember <laughs> where it was but they did the whole like lights were were synced up with the music and yeah, everything cool. so they did that with the nutcracker and, and like it was insanely awesome dude the quality of de decorations for holidays has gone so crazy it wasn't like that when i was a kid no. Oh, yeah. When I was a kid, you it's had like a competition. Yeah. When I was a kid, you had like two line, two strings of light on your house, and you're done. Yeah. Today, like if I did that, my kids are like, "Sucks, Dad. Like, where's the, <laughs> where's the freaking so lame? Yeah, where's the robots yeah. and the fucking strobe lights, dude? I'm almost breaking my neck on the roof, like trying to put these shitty lights on. Yeah, there. exactly. Yeah, so like, whatever, yeah. whatever. Anyway, uh, favorite Christmas movies. Uh, ours Elf. is Christmas Carol with uh, Jim Carrey. Mm. That's a good one. You like Elf? Elf yeah, I got one that Fur. crushes all those. Mm. I got one right. I'll blow them all away. With the Christmas, Christmas story? story? Nope. No. Okay. Nope. What? Nope. nope. Die Hard. <laughs> Stupid. Why are you laughing? That's Die a fucking Christmas movie. Die Hard one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. is a Christmas movie. It is a Christmas movie. And it's a movie. And that. it's an actual movie I want to watch all the time. Yeah, I you know do. I, mean? I watch it around this Die time. Die Hard. Too. It, it'll play. It'll be playing on TBS and TNN. I'll fucking, for sure. Yeah, it yeah, oh, plays wow. every December. Dude, what a great movie that it was! Is a great movie. It's like you're talking about a dude that doesn't. Because remember, at the time, you had all the action heroes like Sylvester Stallone, you know, John Clavin, and you had yeah. fucking what's his name, uh, Bruce, Kim, Willis. Bruce Willis, who doesn't look like that much of a. He looks like a normal dude. Yeah, uh, but he took. You know, it's funny. Like you mentioned that. Like this is a, it's not a Christmas movie, but like it's always on during this time of the year. Uncle Buck. Like, oh, I always I love, catch myself watching Uncle Buck. Oh, I love Uncle John Candy. Best. So good. Yeah. 
So do you remember Uncle Buck? Oh yeah, I totally remember Uncle when he Buck. blows the and it does, and they do it scares the time. shit out of that that bug. Well, well I think the when they go up to that cabin, aren't they? It's it's holiday season. I think it's around I Christmas. I think that's the reason why. I don't. Remember. That's the one where he shoots the bear right and blows yes, off the yeah, hill. Yeah, no, that's out the great outdoors. Oh, that's not the that's same different. one. Oh, yeah. Uncle Buck. Un- uncle Buck's the one where he's yeah he's he's kind of coming in. He's the uncle. Yes, he's watching the kids and the girl. The dude fucks with her. Yeah, he comes. He scares the shit out. God, who would have thought that John Candy would have died early, man? That's weird. It sucks. I love John. Yeah, Kennedy. I love that guy. Best. He was really, really funny. Uh, anyway, I w- I've been meaning to ask you, Adam, how yeah. you know I, it, you've already talked kind of briefly about it with uh, with the audience, and uh, <coughs> let me know if it's not okay if we don't want to. Go <laughs> if it's not okay, yeah. Doug, don't air this yeah, shit. Yeah. Uh, I know you've been off your TRT now for a little while. Yeah, about what six weeks? Yeah, it's been six weeks since I've been a little over six since I've been completely off. Uh, and you're trying to boost your natural. You're trying to get your natural. Coming yeah. Out. So this is the this is the first time and the longest. I, and what I did and it was you know off of a recommendation that came from uh, your client. That's the uh, that recommended that I do a slow taper Very slow and then and then try and, and boost it naturally. So it's really been going on for about six months. So for about six months, I've been just lowering the dosage, lowering little the by dose. little. Yeah, little by little, little by little. And uh, until just recently when I completely came off. And so I was down to like half a cc uh, every two weeks. So that was like hardly anything that Mm -hmm. was kind of keeping me keeping me there. And I've recently completely came off of that. And what's uh, it feel like? What, what are you feeling? It's a motherfucker. Really? Yeah, it's a motherfucker. I mean, I, I had to have a conversation with Katrina at dinner the other night, and I told her, I said, "Hey, you know, because you're not one." Here's the thing about you, and this may be a, this is a strength, but I think it's also a weakness. You don't complain, yeah. so it might be hard for people to know how like rough you may be. You know what I mean? You might not be. You might not show it like outwardly. No, I don't. And I and I and again, Katrina and I have an incredible relationship and we, we communicate really well and and you know we were out having sushi this was just like literally three or four nights ago <clears throat> and I, I said hey you know I, I wanted to talk to you about what's going on with me and stuff like that and she's like oh she got all weird like something's bad I'm like, <laughs> no I said you know I know everything we're all good you know what I'm saying relationships good we're happy everything's going good for us and everything like that but I'm like you know inside I'm fucked up right now like and and I'm working through this whole process and so you know, she's she's like, oh, really? She's like, I didn't. You didn't seem like you're. I'm like, yeah, no. It's you know, it's it's depressing. Like, so the, the depression is real. So like the you know, you those testosterone levels go from being high or normal or above normal to non to non existent. It it's it's very depressing. I don't have a lot of motivation uh, to train and do the thing, which I love to do. I always love to train, but, it, and even when I do, it's, I can't even get into the rhythm. Like I get into when, when my testosterone is flowing, mm-hmm. that aggression, that wanting to lift and to keep going and to push, like it's just not there. And then you, you add in the fact that the sex drive is on the floor also. And, you know, I have a partner that, you know, wants to have sex every night. So it's, I know that's going to put a stress on the relationship. So, you know, I was just very forward and commu- communicated that with her the other day and just said, you know, I'm not, I'm not one to bitch and complain and poor me. It's like, this is all shit that I did to myself because of my early twenties. So I'm not definitely not someone to say poor me, but it, it is, I'm going through it, you know, and I'm, and I'm working through it. So it's been a, it's been a challenge. I, you know, I ordered all the stuff that you sent over to me. Yeah. You're doing the, was the ashwagandha tribulus. And then here's the cool thing. We, so because we have, uh, we're back with four sigmatic, they should be sending us some cordyceps. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would recommend also using cordyceps because oh, okay. cordyceps in some animal studies have been shown to get the Leydig cells, which are the cells in the testicles to produce testosterone. And the thing with test boosters, natural test boosters, is they do work in the context of low testosterone. So if you have normal testosterone and you take them, they're probably not going to do anything for you. Right, right. But because yours is so low, uh, they may help accelerate the process because you did the whole did you went what hcg and other yeah stuff so like i had i did hcg clomid and novadex and, I and now you're, are you off all that now yeah well no i actually still have another seven days of uh the clomid and novadex oh dude right? you're gonna feel so much better when you go off that oh really yes because the novadex and because remember those are selective estrogen receptor modulators so they attach to the estrogen receptor and they're not inert. They still express a little bit, very minor activity. And so they can actually give you estrogenic side effects and cause worse issues with libido and worse issues with emotions and stuff like that. Which I know this because yeah. I remember when I used to use it to, to mitigate the increased levels of testosterone. If I were to boost my testosterone up, I'd always end up uh, 
having to counter that with um, the Novadex, mm-hmm. right? But then I'd also realize I always noticed that it would kill my sex drive, right? So yeah, no, I'm I'm looking forward to so seven days left of that. And then I'm off completely. And then for me, after that, it's like, okay, hopefully I, I start to feel a turn. But it's, When are you going to test your testosterone again to see what's happened? Um, I was actually just telling Katrina we should get me an appointment so I can go in there and go do my blood work because uh, I've been meaning to – I wanted to share this process with everybody before. So, And I kind of did the very beginning, but obviously mind pump's much bigger than what uh, I was when I was first sharing all, all this journey when I was getting in shape. But I just want to – one, I want to do it for awareness for a lot of young guys that are in their 20s that – you know, want to fuck around with testosterone and don't really realize what what they potentially could be doing to themselves uh, long term. And I really didn't fuck around that much. I wasn't like a juice head growing up, dude. It wasn't like that at all. You know, I did a handful of fucking cycles in my early twenties. Just the dosage, the protocol I did, like, and my body. I feel like I'm just genetically, some people do well with it or fine. They don't get any side effects. I got all the side effects. You know, I got the gyno going on. I thought the thinning the hair from it. I got the sex drive diving. Like I had all the side effects from it, but I, they didn't come till later. You know, while I was doing it, it was all, it all seemed fine. Yeah, of course. It wasn't until after the how, fact. Uh, why, why are you wanting to go off? Is it because you want to just see how, what your body can do naturally? Or? Well, there, there's, um, there's a couple of reasons. Um, absolutely. Yes. I, every year I do this. So every year since I've been on TRT, I, I try and, cause I feel like I learned something new about my body. Like every year, you know, I put something together like, Oh wow. You know, when I train and lift heavy, I notice that, that kind of naturally boosts me more. Yeah. And I've, Oh, if I'm doing better with my sleep and things like that, I notice more. So, you know, every time I feel like I'm honing in on ways to, uh, better my natural testosterone levels, so I always like to try and say, because I, I, by no means do I want to have to take testosterone the rest of my life. You know, mm-hmm. obviously I've accepted that and said, okay, if I've got to take testosterone just to have a sex drive, then I will. But I've also, you know, I don't want to give up. You know, so every year I go through this little phase where, you know, I come all the way down and off, and then I try and try different things to try and boost it naturally. And in the past, typically what ends up happening, and it always goes back to the sex drive thing. I ended up going back on for just so I could keep my relationship and, and my sex life normal. But the other reason is, too, that I know that it, obviously if I'm taking artificial testosterone, the likelihood of getting Katrina pregnant is l- little to none. And mm. hopefully in 2018, we'll be we'll be picking our house up. And then after that would be family time if we were going to do that. Oh, so, cool. So there's 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 partially that also, you know, if I'm yeah. if I'm going to really make a, a real attempt at even having a child that would be something that I would need to do, start doing now if I'm going to try and, and, cool. and mitigate yeah. that, right? And then, uh, and then, like I said, of just a natural. Well, I, I appreciate you sharing this with the audience because I think it's in, totally. I think it's invaluable. Yeah, uh, invaluable information for the audience, both for people who lift and people who, because you know, like anything, like you go through a process and uh, it just gives you a different perspective, and then you can communicate it. Well, there's well, not. It's unfortunate it. nobody really talks about right. it. It's very much of a, a taboo subject for some reason still, and I feel like there's a lot of people out there that are going through it. So there's they're, they're, there is. It's going to ring, you know, to to them for sure. You know, there's definitely a lot of people going through it. Not a lot of people are uh, comfortable with talking about it. So, and and this to me is what I've seen at least in my small circle of men's physique and bodybuilding world. You know, it's a lot of these guys. Once you go down that path, like it's you're forever on that path of taking all that stuff, and the amount of the the amount of testosterone I've seen you know, a lot of these guys taking is like it's, it's insane. It's insane. Yeah, it's really insane. I think to myself, like, fuck, I know how much I fucked myself up from my little cycles. But I can't imagine what they're what they're doing right now. You're pretty much signing up to be taking these high doses for a long, long time. Dude, it's crazy. Uh, yeah. Who was that bodybuilder that died? Dallas Carver? Uh, no, Car- what's his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that yeah. his right name? Yeah, Dallas yeah. Carver. Dallas did you McCarver. see his? Did you see his autopsy report? <clears throat> so I read his autopsy report. Uh, enlarged kidneys, uh, diseased liver, uh, enlarged heart. The guy was in his twenties. Wow. They they did a whole lot, and they looked at, and they basically broke down. Like his fucking body was diseased. Wow. And I, yeah. what was he all on? Did they give a list? Or no, it, but um, he's a so he's a pro bodybuilder, obviously. So he took. You know, he I'm took sure, his like gear. everything, but he yeah. took his gear, right? It, probably a decent amount because he's at that level. Not to mention, you combine that with the lifestyle of the amount of food that they eat and right. the ridiculous amounts of protein they feed themselves and all that stuff. In his twenties, dude, that's dude, that's crazy. <laughs> that's stuff that you see in people. It's when you're like at your optimal 
uh, body. You well, should not see that in and, someone. And I, you know, I think Arnold's talked about it a few times too. Like when he, you know, back when they were competing, like his cycles were nothing like they no. are now. And they always went off. Right. They and, always went off. And now it's become so accepted, you know, because studies have came out that, hey, you could technically do this stuff and be okay. Sure. And there are some. So because of that, what do we do? We always take it to the extreme, yeah. you know? And so now it's okay. And so everybody's taking a shit ton of that. I mean, I think most people would be blown away if they really knew how many people inside their gym were actually yep. fucking around with I think, oh, yeah. you. I just, think you think you would, you could tell, but you can't tell no, by can't tell because somebody times. looks good or bad. No, I wish people, un- like what I always try to communicate to people is you'll be blown away at how far you can take your body with proper exercise program oh, and yeah. nutrition. Most people, the vast majority of people, if they just did that yeah. and they did it right, what works for their body the right way, right? Within a relatively short period of time, they would be satisfied. I don't think. I think most oh, people would dude, reach that limit. Let me tell you something right now. When you look, <clears throat> so when you look at my before and afters, right? When I the, the picture I took in my bathroom when I did the video first and said, oh, "Here's day yeah, one." Yeah, big right? transformation. Right. The and a lot of people didn't believe me, but I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Well, you should, hopefully by now, if you've been listening to Mind Pump for long enough, I would be completely transparent with this. I was on testosterone. I was on TRT then. Mm. You know, the fat picture is me. Oh, right. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I was working out inconsistently, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, but your diet was off. And my right? diet was yeah. off. And I said, the only thing that switched was the way I trained and the way I dieted is what got me into shape. I didn't change my, te- I didn't increase my testosterone levels until I became a pro. Hmm. I dabbled with it one time on an amateur show. I got docked for points for being too big. And then I never went back up to that yep. dosage until I got into the professional level where I could be bigger. But yeah, it's it, you. You you can you would be surprised at how amazing you can look if you do all those right things and you don't have to take anabolics. And you would be surprised that if you didn't do those right things and took anabolics, how un, how you wouldn't look good, unsatisfied. Yeah, yeah it might be. <laughs> Dude, I had a guy I worked with years ago who took grams a week. And if you walked in right now, looking the way he did then, n- none of you would even guess that the guy lifted weights. It was yeah. incredible. The amount of, all, all that was happening was he was getting gyno and hair loss. He was getting, no, because his programming was shit and he ate like absolute carb- garbage. But, well, I, you know, we got the cordyceps coming soon from Four Sigmatic. Okay, so you got me doing the, the other... Ashwagandha, Tribulus, uh, Tonkat, Ali. Now, do I have to do the ashwagandha by itself or can I just drink the green juice? Because I like enjoy drinking the green juice that's got it in there already. Uh, I, would, I would add it to it. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I would add to it uh, just it, for now. And then we're going to cycle you around with some of these things. And then we'll add the cordyceps and... See if we can't speed up the process a little bit with some natural, you know, supplements. Mm. What do you got there, Doug? Bring on the juiced out bird. I got a box for you. Oh, more presents. Yeah, this is my favorite thing to do now. Is Dude, what's who, in the box? What's in the box, Doug? Who's, whose idea was it that we order stuff from Thrive Market so that we yeah, could that we could do commercials yeah, but get stuff? Before Sal takes credit. Yeah, thanks, Justin. Was that you, Adam? Of course it was. Yeah, it was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, we got some... Chirps. What? Chirps? Yeah. Who's that for? They're chips like made chips? out of crickets. What? what? What the fuck? Yeah, I'm eating it. No way. Let me see these. No way. Look at this. What? You bought these on Thrive Market? I did. Bro, watch. Hold here on a go. second. Here Let me no, see. No, 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 but yeah, I want to read the macros. What? I want to read the All macros. Right, fine, here you go. I want to read the macros. So it says on the bag, chirps, chirps made with cricket flour. Oh, because it's like wow, twenty they grams make chirping of, noises, bro. Twenty grams of protein per uh for the bag. Wow, that's crazy. What's the calories though for that whole bag? Uh, the yeah. whole bag is uh, roughly six hundred something calories. You're eating crunchy critters. Wow, that's, that's not too bad. Six hundred no. calorie for a twenty gram protein. What's, awesome. It, it. I mean, that most of the stuff in there should. It's all and it's, real. And it's natural. bugs. You know what I mean? Who cares uh, about bugs? Who cares about bugs? Yeah, nobody's nobody's yeah. out there. Yeah, cool. You know what's next? Up? Let me see, let me see that. Let me see. Let's okay, see. next we have these grazed beef sticks. Which are grass fed beef sticks. Don't give them to Justin. Don't give yes! them to Yes! No, we can uh, share those. Now we're fucked. No, I get, I get a couple of these. Oh, I love those. Be- oh, I, I get those sometimes at uh, Whole Foods. I don't know if Thrive Market had those. Yeah. Oh, those are good. Okay. Grazed beef sticks. And then we have, of I'm course, some more guys cashews for the studio. Oh, thank you, Doug. Damn, can you imagine if Doug was really our dad? Yeah. How awesome that would be? <laughs> yeah, it'd be like, we'd be the best kids. For. So we have a shared bathroom with CrossFit. We're going to contribute some Dr. Bronner's 4-in-1 Peppermint Organic Sugar Soap that's, wow. uh, to the bathroom. That's, that's so looking. nice of us. Peppermint yeah. soap. Peppermint soap. That, that soap's I like too Dr. Nice. Bronner's. That's so, that soap's too nice for that gangster-ass bathroom use, that we have to do. You're just going to open um, that and try it first. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll try it. Come on. Let me see. And yeah, last but not it. least, we hope this ply is good enough for Adam. Oh! Booyah! Oh, it's seventh generation. Yeah. No, I'm, it's not I'm like, what does that mean? 
Unbleached like toilet paper. Unbleached. Uh, don't bleach recycled. your asshole. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, you're not going to like it. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> it's let, good. Me see, let me inspect it. <laughs> it's going to feel f- nice and fresh. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Is it and it's recycled? It's, well, I don't think it's, <laughs> it's recycled, recycled toilet paper. <laughs> it's straight out of the toilet. <laughs> yeah. You, Bro, you, you used South it. it was recycled. Wait, did you no, just eat some? It is I'm recycled young. paper. Those chirps yeah. are good. I'm eating yeah. some chirps. Those are actually really good. Mmm. Are they good? Okay. Not bad. Tastes like critter. All right, thank you. Does guys. it really? Does it really taste all right? Yeah, it tastes, yeah, it tastes good, good, bro. It's, it's just me... like chips, bro. Here, try one. How weird is it that people it's... freak out? Oh, it's like weird for me to I try and try it right now. No, it's amazing. I'll, yeah. eat, the, I'll eat the I'll eat the I'll fuck eat... out of bugs, dude. I seriously, hate those bastards. Yeah. There you go. All right. All right, Doug. They bring sound on, delicious. Bring on the anabolic bird. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. All right, our first question is from ASAP Bob. Is it more important for athletes to hit their macro count or focus on a diet that keeps inflammation to a minimum? So this is one of those either or. Well, no, I don't. I don't think it's either or. I think he's saying like, do you think it's more important for an athlete or like a normal compared to like a normal person who's probably trying to just be, get in shape? And and, and he also brings in talks about inflammation. So I don't. I don't think it's more important for an athlete to track their macros. In fact, if there's anybody who could probably get away with. Loosely tracking. I mean, how many athletes have you guys met? I've had a ton of athletes. Athletes never track numbers. Yeah, they eat whatever the fuck they they're want. Terrible with their nutrition. Yeah, for the most part, they're burning so much. They're not. They're not concerned about. I told you not to give the meat sticks to, to, to yeah. Justin. I can't just have them sit here. Is that man. a bug one too, or is it a normal one? No. no can no, I have no. a normal? Let me have one of those. Yeah, so yeah. those look. No, really... come on. We're recording a podcast. So it's what, fine. dude? Jesus, why are you gonna be so? No, I, Everybody such knows a us. Stickler. Yeah, whatever. We're gonna piss off the one new person on here. So we don't normally eat on the fucking show. Sorry, we're so unprofessional. So let me get back on track. So this is an interesting question because uh, what is a diet that keeps inflammation at a minimum? That is different from person to person. Some people would say a low carbohydrate, high fat, moderate protein diet will keep inflammation low. And some studies will show that that's actually true. Other people will say it's a vegan diet that will keep inflammation low. And some studies will show that that's true. The bottom line is if you have... Uh, an intolerance to particular types of foods, or if particular macro counts don't work well for your gut, they're going to cause inflammation, regardless of the food quality or anything like that. So you can even eat the best food quality, but if your body doesn't work well with a high-fat, low-carb type diet, uh, and you may get more inflammation, and the same is true for a vegan diet. So in terms of what, you know, what's more important or, you know, Nutrition is extremely important. It's the other half of the equation. And I don't, I don't subscribe to the whole nutrition it, it, is 80% of your success yeah, and yeah, training no, is 20%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's 50-50. I think they're both extremely important. If you're an athlete, you need to have good training, good exercise I think program. what's hard with an athlete is that if you, if you could have a... You it's have more two, energy-based. Well, think of two different scenarios, right? You have an athlete who is taking the... Uh, uh, or tracking his macros, right? So that person who's tracking his, his macros, sure, he can keep inflammation down. They're going to be a little bit leaner. They may be able to build some more muscle because they're on top of all this stuff. But then the person who doesn't track whatsoever, it takes that same energy that that person put into tracking macros he puts or she puts into perfecting their skill mm-hmm. and playing the sport more or doing it more. That person in, in sport life, is going to car- that's going to carry over and benefit them more than that person who's doing that. Now, in a perfect world, you do both, right? I yeah. tell you what, though. <clears throat> let's say you're training a high school or college athlete. Where do you think, if you were coaching them, right? Mm. Let's say they're in college. They're, then they've got, they've got the, the whole strength training program and everything like that going on. Where do you think you'd be able to give them the most edge, with their oh, diet yeah. or with their training. Diet. Yeah. Only you know, because, because everybody's, everybody's neglecting sh- it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and to be honest, going through the process of it, like, it, like, I mean, I, I was able to get a, a scholarship to, to play. And, you know, with that, we basically were allowed to go to the cafeteria and eat. And so that was like my option because otherwise I had to go get a job and pay to outside to go get food elsewhere. Right. It becomes like, for a lot of athletes, after um, you after you did that, they stopped that whole program, right? They stopped. Like, <laughs> I, ate, I ate all. They're the losing, losing money. money on this. 
<laughs> dude, not me. You should have seen the other beasts that oh, uh, I know. You were in front pictures, of me. Trust yeah. me. Um, but yeah, like that, honestly, it was because it's so demanding, like refueling was like the high perf- like, uh, priority. Like it was just like, how much can I refeed and, and, and recover and, um, in order to then survive sort of the next r- grueling practice that, you know, you have to kind of endure. What so, were your go-to meals back then? <clears throat> I mean, it was, with cafeterias, like you barely get any protein. It was so frustrating. It's always carbs, huh? Yeah. It was terrible, man. Pastas it was like so much breads. starchy shit yeah. that like, dude, if I was to do it all over again, I mean, my diet would look completely different mm-hmm. and, you know, very heavy. Um, if I did get like a lot of the, the carbohydrates, obviously most would be, you know, from vegetables and, you know, like maybe more like like potatoes and things like that if I have to go starch. But I think you're right, Sal. I think that in, if we were to if we were to look at a college kid, then for sure. Only because you, you would separate them from the pack. Well, yeah. Cause, I mean, even it doesn't have to be a college kid. I'm even well, a kid. Right. Anybody yeah. who's oh, college, yeah. college or younger. Now, I think the perfect that's a lot of what separates some of the pros. Right. Totally. Some of the pros. Not only did you have the genetics, not only did you have the workout. Ethic, but then on top of that too you're doing all the little things Well, because right? it's a performance enhancement too so like where i was trying to get to was if you know so there's survival mode right and that's that's one portion of it like getting through the week and the grueling practices and whatnot but you know leading up into actual like timing out my energy leading up to the game so actually restricting what i'm eating uh, significantly and then reintroducing and then like adding like good carbohydrates uh, to fuel me going into the game. Like I only did that a handful of times. And when I did, I- I'll tell you what, man, I was, I was like on point. Mm-hmm. I was sharp and I was explosive and I moved well and it was a different kind of an energy. So right. it definitely makes a difference. Yeah. This is the thing. Like if you're an athlete um, in you're competing in a sport in high school or college, Focus on your nutrition. You will be way ahead of your peers. I right. mean, everybody's working out at that point. Everybody's training for their sport. And you, of course, you can have good exercise programming that'll be better than the next guy. But you're not going to be working out and competing against guys who aren't working out. Like everybody's working out. Yeah. When it comes to nutrition, most of your peers give fuck all. They do nothing. They they Dude. don't care about it at all. It's right. literally. Yeah, you're in college, you're drinking. You you're that. drinking, you're stuffing your face. So if you pay some attention to your nutrition... Oh, my God. You, yeah. It's Between like, oh, that and sleep? Oh, oh, what a great point. Done. Right. Absolutely great yeah. point. Yeah, you, you get good sleep and eat right, and you're on a whole nother level. Everybody uh, else is not doing that. At all. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Next question is from Cone J. I seem to be more productive at night, and I usually finish work late. Is working out at after midnight and getting less sleep... Better than skipping a workout. So ah, sounds yeah. like it sounds that's, like it's a toss up, right? Yeah, it's like robbing Peter to pay Paul, right? You know, yeah. here's your thing: like you got to there's you have your base uh, fundamentals that you need for your for health, and then there's things that are on top of that that are still important but less important. Now, the on the bottom you have: are you getting enough water? Are you eating? Uh, you know, are you getting enough nutrients because you don't want any nutrient deficiencies? Do you have shelter? And are you getting enough sleep? It's actually there. Sleep is so important that they've done, they'll do studies on people and they'll restrict them of sleep. And we can measure within a day uh, reductions in cognitive performance. We can measure within a day hormonal changes. We can show, in fact, if you restrict someone from sleeping for something like, like 24 hours alone. You know, unpack that so people understand too that like most people can't put that together. This is literally, there's not a lot of things that are like that. Right. We can go without water for days. We yeah. can go without food for days. Yeah. Like You can not- miss a workout and still perform great. Right. You miss one night of sleep and you are fundamentally affecting everything right. in a big way, and even then, if you think you feel good. And every day that goes on beyond yep. that is just worse, right? And those it's that's catch a, up. That's an extreme analogy because this person obviously isn't, uh, not sleeping at all, but right. yeah. you know, think about it. You're de- if you deprive yourself an hour or two there, you deprive yourself another hour or two. Like that all adds up, you know. Yeah, mm. the problem with sleep with with humans is that we 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 can function on basic levels pretty okay with restricted sleep, and so that we fool ourselves into thinking like that we're okay. Like, oh, I can get by. I'm good yeah, with six hours of sleep. Continually do this. Yeah, and, and then we you know, all right. Yeah, and we feed ourselves caffeine and all that stuff. And I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, when in fact you're you're not. And they and again, this is this is pretty settled and established science. Now, of course, the amount of sleep that you need 
can vary between individuals. Quality of sleep is also very important. So it's not just that you're sleeping for eight hours or whatever, that you actually have quality sleep. But no, I would not miss sleep for workout uh, unless it was a small amount and it was rare. I simply, I simply wouldn't do it. Now, ideally in this situation, uh, you would do both. So ideally, what you would do is you would be you would prioritize sleep and your workout and schedule it and structure it so that you can do both of them. If that means you have a shorter workout, then so be it. If it means that you work even more productively so you can finish early, then so be it. Uh, but that that would be the ideal situation is to not you know miss either one. But if you absolutely have to pick. Sleep, no, sleep wins, dude. Nothing. Yeah, nothing's above sleep, that. Yeah, sleep wins more than mm. skipping. So skipping a workout is not going to be detrimental to you as much as not sleeping is going to be. No, so. I, you know how often I used to, I would push myself to the point where I get sick. When and I, I and, miss so much sleep, I get. And sick. And I know this is against the the <clears throat> the motivation message that's out there, right? Like it's mm. just oh, do it. You just got to do just it. Gotta you, add you more push through. work. Yeah. And I and I do think that there. There is some validity at, right? There is some that, okay, you know what? If you're somebody who makes excuses all the time and you're lazy and you don't do things like that, then like, okay, this, I told myself I was going to get started. Yes, this, I didn't sleep well last night. That's just an excuse. I'm going to the gym no matter what. Like, I understand that. I could get that, but that's not something you would want to make as a a regular habit that's going on. I saw a video and I know it's just, it was kind of tongue in cheek and it was this guy doing little micro workouts, you know? And so he was like in his, office and stretchy pants and you know doing these micro workouts and getting it in but like you have to assess like where to get it in during the day like when you're active and you're up and you're you know there's a way that you can you can do it even if it's only 10 minutes like period wise like we do our trigger sessions something like that where you you know at least you're you're getting activity out of your muscles and you're you're getting stimulus uh you know for the meantime until your schedule allows it you know it's funny it wasn't that long ago where if you told a an executive or an entrepreneur that working out would uh enhance their performance at work that they'd laugh at you it wasn't that long ago like if you went up to a business person an executive a hard charging type a individual and you said to them hey listen if you devote three hours a week to exercise, three days a week, so if you go to the gym three days a week, you're going to perform better at work, they would have said, that's stupid because I'm not going to waste an hour working out when I can spend that hour working. Now, today, you'll hardly have any arguments. Today, pretty much everybody agrees that if you exercise, you'll produce better at work than if you don't. Hmm. And part of this was, I credit um, uh, Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins, uh, the motivational, the famous motivational speaker, made it cool or at least uh, help people understand that fitness was part of your overall performance. And he would talk about this all the time, how his exercise regime makes him a more effective entrepreneur. And then all of a sudden people started realizing like, hey, and by, studies will prove this. If you exercise, mm-hmm. you're more productive at work, you're you know, less sick days. You, it's just, you're just going to be a better, a more productive person. Now, when you say sleep does the same thing, people will argue with you, which is funny because yeah. It's well, more important than your workout. Well, which is interesting, yeah. I was going to say, because like, you know, he came in with that angle. Now all you see in all these entrepreneur magazines and everything is who's getting up the earliest, yeah. you know? And it's like this competitive thing to- This is, that is like, something that's funny. Who, who's getting up super early Let and like point, being the most dude. productive that and all this shit. It's such a big shit. thing right now. Yeah. yeah. It's a, um, uh, it's the martyr. It's the whole martyr, yeah. you know, mentality. So, yeah, I mean, and by the way, sleeping too much is bad too. So, you know, of study, course. you know, because that could signify depression, it can signify health issues. So, we're not telling you like go and, and crash out and sleep 10 hours every night, but uh, don't skimp on your sleep. If you're a productive person with work, if you're an entrepreneur, getting adequate sleep and getting quality sleep will make you far more effective at what you're trying to do. It will not take away from what you're trying to do. So although right. you may think to yourself, you know, you may be sitting at work, you may be sitting at home and thinking to yourself, okay, I can either go to bed now or I can spend another hour working. Which one's going to be more productive for me? Mm-hmm. You may think that that hour working is more productive and it may be in the short term, but definitely not in the medium or long term. So aim for the sleep. It's uh, one of the most important things you could do for not just your health, but your productivity. Amy E. Jolly, 
What are the pros and cons of having a male versus female coach for a woman? Uh, this is a, this <laughs> oh is a good question. Yeah. You know, it's a good question because in there's a few there's a few things that you do or few uh, professions that I can think of where that's still a question that they'll ask the consumer. Yeah, like if it, like there's two things I can think of: massage and training. Mm-hmm. Where you will actually ask the client, "Do you prefer a female or male?" Al- almost no other job. Would you ask? That's a good point. I'm yeah. trying to think, I'm trying to think of another situation where I've been asked, do you want a male or a female? Yeah, you're not going to be like, you know, call a plumber and they'll be like, hey, do you want a man or a woman? <laughs> yeah, which is interesting. They would think it's apparently so sexy. There is I love, no sex now. I love so. that you use that analogy, though, because it's one of the things that used to drive me crazy and we used to get it all the time. We get it all for, the time in the gym. Yeah. Right? Well, we used to get it all the time on this show, too. Like, why don't you guys bring a female host on there? It's like, it doesn't make sense yeah, to me. Yeah. Like, that's not the right statement. Right? Why don't you bring another qualified person to, to talk? Yeah, better, regardless of gender. Regardless of the gender. Like it doesn't, and so uh, I don't know why we. I think it's such a sexist thing to think that way. To think yeah. that like it, male or female. I do think that. Um, I think a for for training purposes, a female version of myself is better than me. Mm-hmm. So and and that's just because I think that the ability to be empathetic and probably and, because the consumer may may connect easier. right. So I mean, they be they're they, they're more empathetic. <sighs> They, they, they will connect probably better. I mean, if all things are equal, right? Like our skill set. She's got the exact same She's identical. The yeah, she's is, identical. She's a female. I'm a male. Difference is vagina or penis. Right. Wow. That's the only difference. But because of that, she's she now has traits that I think are are beneficial for for sales, for being a trainer, for things like that. For also too for like understanding somebody who's going through struggles too as she's as she's getting trained. So it's like I think that women have a better job at doing that than mm. than men do. So if you have all this, all things equal, yeah, I think a, a well, woman here's could the be thing. Superior. Like here's the thing: if you're a female uh, consumer, this is just my experience in the gyms, right? If you're a female consumer. You will you will prefer male or female or neither or whatever. You'll just say it doesn't matter. If you're a male, rarely does a guy say he wants a female coach, and this that's true. I, all, Unless he's creeping a little. Bit. I've almost yeah. never I've almost never had a man, you know, buy training at. The well, gym let's that talk I've about why, let's talk about why that is ego. We, yeah. Ego. 100%. Well, yes, that and there's there's some there is some truth to this that, you know, I, I definitely had signed people up who bought personal training. And, you know, I've got this cute little fiery personal trainer who works for me and she's, but she's 105 pounds and to lift a hundred pound dumbbell and hand it to him before he does a chest spot press him. or spot him on a bench for 315, mm-hmm. he's concerned as she is too. Sure. Yeah, you know what I'm sure, saying? Yeah. She's not, she's, but, but this is not a good match. But that's, that's, uh, that's rare because the average client that buys training right. at a gym is just out of shape, you know, person. And, right. and most of my female trainers were stronger than, yeah. than the, than the guys that would hire them. Them, you know, but right, totally. so it's usually a, it's believe it or not, this is more an issue with the male consumer. Male consumers well, typically don't want to work. Know. With a well, I, I I used to see it. I think mainly it was the concern from like especially some of the married women that would come yeah. in that were worried that they're because the jealous asshole you know type of guy that's going to have a problem with. You know, all this time you're spending with with this male trainer, I used to get that a lot. Like I get, bro, I canceled. I think at the end of the me because of that. At the end of the day, pros cons wise, I mean, it really comes down to if if you have the two, like I said, that are exactly this, or you have male female. If one of them is just the slightest bit more qualified, that makes them better. You know, whether it be that be experience, whether it be education, whether it be communication, whether it be program design, whether it be understanding of nutrition, if they have an edge on the other person, I don't give a fuck what sex it is. That's the better trainer. I think it's really, it's a personality thing more than anything. Absolutely. If you vibe well with somebody, regardless. Well, this is what I did for 10 years. For 10 years, I, you know, I was the one who trafficked most of the the guests that came in and bought personal training. They met me first before they met their personal trainer. Mm -hmm. And my, my job was to know my staff so well that I, by meeting somebody for five like, oh, minutes, you guys will gel, right? I, yeah. I, I could say this guy's going to be great for Justin, or this girl's going to be great for this. And sometimes it was the opposite sex, and sometimes it's the same sex. Never though was that like a factor, like oh, because this is a female, I'm going to give this a female. I never thought like that. I always right. thought like, oh wow, they have a they have a story, and I know Melanie. She had this as a child, and so she's going to connect really well with her, mm-hmm. and they're going to be able to share that. That's a great. Dad. Had nothing to do with her sex. It has more to do yeah. with her story and her character. That's way more impactful. Yeah, it, it's funny that people would get jealous too, like husbands, because I'd see that too. Like, oh my, yeah. you know, I have to hire a female because so my husband or my boyfriend doesn't want me to working with a male trainer, which is like whatever. We're helping you out. Well, part, yeah, yeah, part, 
Come part, on. I mean, part of it is the the industry itself. Let's be let's be real. Well, I mean, seven, personal it, trainers. Remember that there, stat some, I posted for you guys? Seventy-two yeah. percent of trainers sleep with their clients. That's a, it's a, was it that? Seventy-two percent. Yeah. Sleep with some of their clients. Yeah, that's terrible. That's it. Yeah, no, it's a true stat. I, I know. I, just, I, knew, I just scared two. every wife right now. That has I knew two that I worked with, and I was like, really? "Really, dude." I so I had a buddy who owned a gym who had a female trainer who used to sleep with her female clients, wow. and they were married women. She was like, she was like, he's sounds like, like an awesome movie. Dude, yeah, I was he, gonna say, it sounds like something I watched on Netflix, bro. He would tell me he's like, he had to get <laughs> I wish he, Netflix. He got rid of her because he found out about <laughs> all this stuff, <laughs> and he's like, it's crazy because. Some of these women were, I would assign them to this other female trainer because their boyfriends or husbands didn't want them working with a male trainer. Right. And then, and yeah. then of course. And then she would shark them. Yeah. And she would fucking nah, shark them, nah. dude. So we had to fire her. Oh, that's hilarious. How oh. crazy. That's hilarious. Is that? Yeah. yeah. No, it doesn't matter. Here's the deal. Uh, there are no pros and cons other than the ones you make up in your own head. Right. Pick the one that's that you gel with the best, that's got the best qualifications, and don't worry about whether or not they have a penis or vagina. Yeah. Next question is from Siggy66. Hey, Siggy. What are your thoughts on transitioning into minimalist shoes? I often have knee pain whenever I wear wear thick-soled shoes, which I think causes a whole host of issues throughout my body with all the connective tissue. So Mm -hmm. I wanted this question because it's probably been been a minute, three, four hundred episodes since we've even brought up minimalist shoes. And I'll tell you that my opinion on them has evolved and changed totally yeah so i definitely uh when they first came out you know i remember being like oh pff, yeah. Yeah, here we go you know yeah. another fucking toe fat. Shoe, just what weirdo. i want to see is your fucking <laughs> weird ass toes everywhere i go right so i was super anti them um but i there's definitely uh, a place for it and i think if you know that and i for sure was one of these people who i had poor connection to my feet i couldn't wiggle my toes well my ankle pronated on both sides. It was excessive on the right side. Mm. I mean, so I just, I may as well not even had fucking feet. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I'm just, I'm all ankles. I'm all ankles, <laughs> no feet, you know, not even connected to them. And I now practice, I don't wear shoes like this, but I most certainly walk around barefoot all the time now. In our studio, I train, I was training barefoot yesterday. Like, that has become a, a staple thing for me. So, uh, for that, and if you're aware of that with yourself, you're somebody who's probably disconnected from his feet, and you know that, and it could be causing pain everywhere else. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. a, I'm a now, fan. Yeah. Now that being said, now, if you just switch into minimal shoes, no, there's a process, and you ex- yeah, and you expect excellent point. to have all excellent these because you'll still pronate. You're you're, you're fucked. Yeah, the, recru- anything, the recruitment fucked. patterns are still there. Yeah, so if you if your feet tend to pronate and you wear shoes that correct that, and you wear big padding on your shoes, and you think, oh, I'm going to go into minimal shoes, and it's going to fix my ankle and knee problems, you're going to make, um, they're actually going to make them worse because you didn't fix the problem. You just went into a less supportive so shoe. You put a lot more stress to that. Yeah, it is a slow process. I remember when, so when this first got popular, what was that book? It was a book that came out where this, this runner wrote about how he traveled to different parts of the world and there was that tribe mm. in Mexico that yeah. runs since yeah, they're yeah, kids. Yeah, and then there's, you know, the Kenyans who run barefoot mm-hmm. and he filmed these these tribes and stuff of people where in some cases you know people in their 70s and 80s were still running like 10 miles a day with no problems and he was shocked that they had no knee problems no 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 back problems but they all ran barefoot and so what he did is he filmed these people running and what he noticed was the way that you run when you're barefoot is different than the way the gait's totally different the gait's very different you strike with the forefoot first Mm because the the foot and the ankle actually act like a massive shock absorber in the body. Mm-hmm. When you're running with big, thick, padded shoes, like, yeah. you take it out. You right. actually hit heel first, and you're yeah. taught to hit heel well, first. Well, you're a lot more forward in your posture. It, yeah. Your posture change, everything changes. So he said, oh, shit, we need to be running barefoot. And then that spurred this movement where you had all these runners all of a sudden threw away the running shoes. And like anything in the fitness industry, there's some truth to it. There is. And, and then we take something and we we bastardize and, and, and it. And that's what know? they did. They threw away their running shoes. People went barefoot and then everybody had major problems in their soleus and their ankles and their feet and their hips and their knees and their backs because... We grew up wearing soles. Dude, they didn't, soles. they didn't transition. No. Like it's a slow transition. So if you're going to go from thick padded you know, type of shoes, supportive shoes... You got to learn how to do foot exercises, do them 
all the time. Get yourself to the point where you can connect your feet, then you can strengthen the arch. This of your is foot, all Prime toes. Pro, right? Prime here. Pro. Yeah. Prime Pro gets gets deep into all this, and I've shared some stuff on YouTube. I've shared some stuff on my. This has been a big deal for me. So this is, you know, I went from being somebody who had really really poor connection that I think I'm pretty good. Like I I can train. I can do a very deep squat. Uh, loaded as heavy as I could with shoes on. Now I can do that barefoot. Just a year ago, I couldn't do that. A right. year ago, I would have to to get that kind of depth to be that connected to not pronate. I would I would have to be all strapped up and everything. So there's a me. lot of muscle and and connective tissue on your feet, and I think that we've have just like ignored that fact for yeah. For we think so it's long. like a flipper. Yeah, it's like <laughs> ah, know? this is just like yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is just a board that I'm moving. Yeah, you know, in space. It's like no, like it's you're stabilizing constantly from like oh so many different directions, I think, all different kinds. I of I think forces. it's so important though to note what you said. So I can't. You just got to reiterate that is that it's not the shoes aren't what's going to fix the issues because if you've already trained yourself to be in shoes for so many years, which you have, yes, you work on that. It. You have yeah, for sure the issues are still there. So I think that it's you know what it reminds me of is like uh, telling somebody about how I feel about chiropractors too. Like if you go see a chiropractor and you just get adjusted and then you go back. You feel better for a minute. Yeah, you're going to go right back to your same patterns and then your body's going to be in the same position again. Well, the feet are the same thing. Like if you're not... If you're not doing the corrective work with you actually putting on something like that and challenging your shoes, ah, that's so. Gonna- so here's here's my recommendation: if you want to switch into minim- minimalist shoes, uh, get yourself enrolled in Maps Prime Pro or some other kind of program that has uh, elements that focus on strengthening the feet, the toes, and the ankles. Start training your feet uh, on a regular basis. Ramp yourself up. Uh, do it slowly over time to where you start to Which, realize. Yeah. By by the way, sorry to interrupt you again, but the, you you doing this uh, wearing minimalist shoes is less important than the work because you could wear chucks or wear normal shoes and put all the work in, and you'll fix more problems with your feet than oh, yeah. you will by switching over to minimalist shoes. That's right. That's something you got to keep in mind. Is that no? This is everything. The minimalist right. shoes are not are, are okay. So the the minimal. So let me let me continue, and I'll tell you what the minimalist shoes are for. Do the exercises on a regular basis. Strengthen your feet. Get them better and more connected over a long period of time. Start walking barefoot at home. Now, what the minimalist shoes will do after you've done this for a while, like six months to a year, is you're going to do less damage. Because if you're doing all these exercises and you're strengthening your feet and getting them connected, and then you go put on those big, thick, supportive shoes, now you're kind of fighting what you've done with your feet in terms of correcting them because now you're wearing these thick shoes. So what minimalist shoe is, shoes do is they minimize the damage or the poor recruitment patterns that a big shoe or, or a maximalist shoe would normally do. And that's why you wear minimalist shoes, not because they're superior to the to the thick big shoes, right. but because they will help minimize the damage that shoes actually do. Well, when you're, when you're connected all the way to the ground like that, you can, or at least for me, I could feel... I could feel when I would deviate. So like I would notice mm-hmm. if I was going to the restroom and I would see it, my, my ankles would, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about peeing. I'm not thinking about how I'm standing. And all of a sudden I would pronate. see, yeah, I see my, boom, my ankle pronate. And when you're, when your feet, your toes in, are on the ground and you can feel that there, it's, it's a lot easier to see and feel when you're inside of a shoe, it's really tough to see that you look down your sneakers and your left, your right one look exactly the same. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They don't look like you can't see it. You don't see, unless you have an excessive, if you have a really bad, which by the way, if you're somebody who has, if you look at the the inside of your shoes and it's all smashed like hamburgers, worn yeah, worn out inside, or oh man, that's really bad. Like yeah, you're, you're yeah. pronating really. Now, bad. what are the benefits of doing this besides the fact that now you get to wear minimalist shoes? The benefits are better movement, uh, better movement in your exercises, better walking, better health of your ankles, your mm-hmm. knees, your hips, your low back, your core. Better muscle activation when you work out. Oh, it um, stems all the way up uh, your entire body. All the way up the entire body. It is super worth it. And it's actually, uh, there's few things, look, there's been a few things that uh, Adam, Justin, and myself have been blown away by since we started Mind Pump. Because when we started Mind Pump, we'd already been doing this for a long time. So, you know, at this point, rarely do you, does something really fucking shake the foundation of what you understand with fitness, this was one of them. Yeah, it was. was uh, That's why I wanted to talk about I, it. I didn't realize just how much of an impact 
Whoa. strengthening my feet and ankles would have on everything. It didn't get any emphasis in uh, any of the certifications it's not or anything sexy. that we've gone It's not sexy. Through. Yeah. It's not sexy. The the, yeah. the footwork that I have to do is so lame and tedious. I get why nobody and markets feet are to it. Disgusting. Nobody talks about <laughs> it. Nobody wants to do it because it is. But I'll tell you what, 30 years of my life I didn't do anything for my feet and my ankles. Nothing. And like that's for sure a staple prime that I prime movement that I do before is get all my ankles and my feet all connected again and it makes a huge difference. And then once you've put the work in cuz it was a it was a long road for the first 6 months to a year for me. Now it's just making sure I stay on it, you know, making sure that I'm staying on it, I'm staying connected, I'm doing the, the barefoot stuff, or if you got the minimalist shoes. I think about the minimalist shoes. The only thing I don't like about that. They're ugly? Yes. <laughs> yeah, they are. Well, I'm some a shoe of them guy, out right? there. Yeah, some of them out there. Some of them don't better. have the foot, the toes. Yeah, they just have those the wide, ones I, I like. But yeah. they have the wide toe box, so it still kind of looks weird. Looks yeah. like a big old, like a clip. Yeah, they're getting I'm, better. The ones I used to have, they would shred. Well, I, I, I feel like I feel like Chucks are really close to being right there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Here's why I stick with Chucks. Here's what here's Here's the the people who will benefit most from working on their feet and ankles are women that wear high heels a lot. Oh, of course. You you I mean yeah. you're talking about a crazy horrible recruitment pattern that you develop from wearing heels all day long. I have my aunt. So my aunt is a professional in the banking uh, industry. She's very very good at what she does. She always dresses very professional, obviously, and has worn heels every day for work for I don't know 25 years or so. Right? She if she walks around barefoot. She gets um, she gets plantar fasciitis mm. and she gets issues in her ankles from walking barefoot because yeah. her foot has just has a cus- be elevated. It's she's so she, her body is accustomed to this freaking horrible and she's got a, an incredible anterior pelvic tilt mm-hmm. causes back pain and so I told her you know try walking back you know barefoot and she sends me a text and she's like oh my god I walked barefoot yesterday my feet are killing me my ankles yeah. are, and I'm like oh so shit so much pain I have yeah. to scale it like I have yeah. to get you to go to like just shorter heels right. first right. and then slowly progress you out of it so wow. there Definitely. you go check it out Mind Pump TV it is the premier fitness channel on YouTube <laughs> we actually won first place in a contest that was judged by me Adam and Justin yeah. uh, you, it's on YouTube subscribe to that channel we post a new video all the time, almost every single day. I may give you a trophy. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.